What's going on, Salt Star Nation? Today, I'm going to show you guys how to tie my favorite surf fishing rig of all time. This is a great rig for targeting a ton of different species right off of the beach. I've caught sharks, pompano, black drum, whiting, a ton of different species, and this has a lot of different names. Uh, you know, I've called it pompano rigs in previous videos, uh, but I've seen it also called a spot rig, mullet rig, chicken rig, three float hook rig. It's got a lot of different names, but basically, it's a really simple rig to tie, and you only need a couple simple materials. Now, if you were to buy this rig, in the store it'll cost you you know about three four dollars and as you can see it really all they do in the store is they put a bead and some hooks snap swivel um, and the barrel swivel on it so really not a great rig so I'm gonna show you guys how to make a better version of that today that leaves you some options for customization for what you want to do so first thing you need is some fishing line monofilament or fluorocarbon I'm using the Seaguar blue label uh, this is just my personal preference uh, you can use fluorocarbon uh, I also would recommend going a little bit lighter, but I would stay in the 20 to 30 pound test range. Uh, today I'm using the 30 pound just because it shows up a little bit better on film. Uh, normally I would use a 20 pound test. So uh, that's the first thing that you need. Also in terms of hardware, I've got these Spro number two barrel swivels. These are going to be your top connection on your line that's going to connect to your main line. I've also got some Tsunami snap swivels. I believe these are the number two as well. Um, again, you can use whatever manufacturer you want as long as it's just you know a strong barrel swivel that's gonna be able to handle a heavy lead. In terms of floats, you can buy the store-bought floats. Uh, these are gonna cost you, you know, for 10 of them, four or five dollars. I prefer to make my own out of flip-flops and I do have a video on how to do this. It's titled, The Top Three Surf Fishing Rig Hacks. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel and on the Salt Strong page if you wanna check that out. But basically, you can make these out of flip-flops for a fraction of the cost of these store-bought floats. But if you wanted to get these store-bought floats, my best recommendation is get them online because they're usually sold out in stores, which is why I make my own. Um, but I get them off of Lindy's. The Lindy Snell Floats is where I get mine. Uh, and, and you can just customize it to really whatever you want um, and get whatever float you want I do recommend you have a float because it keeps your hook off the bottom and it gives it a little bit more sight uh, and also speaking in terms of sight I recommend that you get a bead now my favorite color is orange because that imitates the eggs that are on the bottom of a sand flea which is a really popular bait uh, for pretty much any species uh, so I recommend that you have a bead on your hooks and then in terms of the hooks you can use circle or kale hooks I prefer you know the kale hooks because they work in a really great wide uh, range of applications whether you're using and, you know fish bites or live bait um, but it's really up to you if you want to use circle hooks that's totally your option and they work just as fine uh, so I've got the two ot kale hooks in front of me and that's what I'm going to be using today and in terms of leads that one's up to you but I recommend that you use something that's going to stick in the sand so a pyramid sinker a storm sinker or a tongue sinker and just you're going to adjust the weight depending on where you live how high the current is that day uh, but just know that you're going to need a heavy ounce weight uh, that also is going to be able to stick in the sand so let's dive into exactly how to tie this rig so to create the backbone of this rig, you're going to go ahead and need to pull out about five feet worth of line. Like I said, I'm using that Seaguar blue label and I've got about a five foot wingspan. So I just stretch it out just like this, trim it off the spool. And the first thing I do is tie on my snap swivel. Again, I'm using the number two size Tsunami Tackle Snap Swivels. And this is just going to create a little anchor point as I continue to tie on my dropper loops. Now this rig is not gonna be five feet long, uh, but as you tie dropper loops, it's gonna decrease in size uh, pretty greatly as, as the dropper loops are gonna be you know, three and four inches long. So go ahead and tie that snap swivel on with a simple clinch knot. So one, two, three, four, five wraps around the main line and then straight right back through uh, the original loop. And that's gonna create a good little connection. You know we're tossing some pretty heavy leads, so you wanna make sure that you're set there with a good snug knot. So as you can see, just nice tight connection right there. And we're gonna go ahead and and tie on, well, snap on our lead. So this is just gonna create that nice anchor point as we tie on all of these new dropper loops. So I've got my lead sitting down here and I'm gonna move about 10 inches up the line and tie on my first dropper loop. Now the reason I do that is because, you know, there's a lot of trash fish that like to sit close to the bottom like lizard fish, pin fish, catfish. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we don't have our dropper loop too far down. If it's down here, it's gonna give them more of an opportunity to attack that bait or that fish bites or whatever we're using on our float rigs. So 10 inches up the line, go ahead and get that set up. And to tie these dropper loops, all you gotta do is make sure you've got your desired length, that three, four inch size, and wrap your line around that loop five times. So that's one, two, three, four, 
and five. So we've got five right there. And if you need to adjust the size, let's say you accidentally tightened it, you know, you can stretch it out by pulling on the, the actual loop itself. And if you need to make it smaller, you can tie, uh, or you can pull on these main lines and it'll make it a little bit tighter. So as you can see, I've got it still that 10 inches up. You need to find the middle of these twists open it up with your fingers or your nail, and you're gonna stick this untwisted end right back through here. Now what that's gonna do is gonna create some loops that are gonna look a lot like this, and to tighten them down, what you need to do is use your teeth. And make sure you do it slowly, because if you pull too quickly, the line won't cinch correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down with my teeth right now. So as you can see here, about 10 inches up, I've got my first dropper loop. And this is, you know, the proper length that's, you know, three inches right there, that is perfect. So what we're gonna do is set this over a little bit further back and we're gonna move another 10 inches up and start our next dropper loop. So go ahead and make those five twists. So one, two, three, four, and here comes number five. Now again, if you need to, you know, make it bigger, go ahead and do that if you need to make it smaller, but make sure again that you're that 10 inches away. As you get ready to cinch it down, you wanna make sure you've got that proper distance. Go ahead and open up that middle twist. Right here, I can see that it's gonna cinch up properly. So boom, got ourselves our second dropper loop right there. And we're gonna go ahead and move up to make the third one. So go ahead and move up, you know, that 10 inches like we've talked about, you've got it right there. And go ahead and finish out that last dropper loop. So one, two, three, four, and five. Find that middle twist. Open it up, pull the untwisted line through, and cinch it down with your teeth. So there you have it. We have all three of our dropper loops completed and you can see the total you know, size of this rig. If you need to trim it down, the good news is we haven't tied anything on here so you can make it smaller if you'd like. But this is you know, about four and a half feet, three and a half feet. Um, so it, it's greatly decreased in size from that five foot length. Um, and now all we're gonna do is just tie on our beads and our floats and our hooks and we'll be ready to rock and roll with this rig. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll go ahead and just begin with this top loop and we're going to push the the pill float right on first it's important that you put the floats on first otherwise uh, the rig is not going to be set up correctly so float goes first and then the bead and then the hook so starting with the float just go ahead push it through and you've got your bead put that on next and then you've got your hook. Now when you do these hooks, again, I recommend you use the quick switch knot. Um, I've talked about this knot a little bit in prior videos, but the reason I do the quick switch knot is it allows me to you know, change out floats if I wanna use a different color, if I don't wanna use a float at all, or if I wanna use a different bead. So the way you tie on the quick switch float is you just take your loop and you turn the hook towards the loop. Go ahead, push it through the front right here. And once you've got that open face loop, run it right back as far as you can, twist, the uh, the open loop and what that's going to do is just create a nice strong connection as you pull right back up and it allows you to have a nice secure you know loop right there connected to your hook but if you want to change things out all you got to do is just apply a little bit of pressure on the back of the loop run it back over the shank and boom you can now change out your pill float to you know a flip-flop float or uh, one of the store-bought Lindy floats, or you can change out the bead, or you can take everything off and just have a bare hook if you wanted to. This quick switch knot really allows a lot of customization on these rigs, uh, but it just is my favorite to use. If you wanted something stronger, use the Palomar knot. Now granted, you're gonna need a lo much longer loop to do that. So when you tie these rigs, make sure you have a longer loop for the Palomar knots. But again, I, I just use you know these quick switch knots, so all I need is that, that three inch loop. So let's go ahead and put the rest of the floats and beads and hooks on this so you guys can see the finished product. So 
So now we have filled in all of the dropper loops with their appropriate floats and beads and hooks. And you know, with that quick switch knot, you can always change everything out later. If you wanted circle hooks or you wanted to remove the floats or a different color bead, you know, you can do that. Um, so now all we need to do to finish out this rig is tie on your barrel swivel. Again, I'm just using a size number two from Spro. And I just tie the exact same knot that I did with the uh, snap swivel at the bottom. So five wraps around the backbone line, run it back right through the original loop and tighten it. Got a nice secure connection there. And with that tied on, it completes our Pompano rig. As you guys can see, just a really clean little rig gives you a lot of options if you use that quick switch knot to change things out if you'd like to. But this is one of the most effective rigs in the surf and it'll catch anything from drum to whiting to Pompano. I've caught sharks, you know, it's an extremely versatile rig. So I highly recommend that you guys at least have one of these tied up and in your tackle box when you go surf fishing. Now this is gonna wrap up the video on how to tie these rigs and the rigs are an extremely important part of fishing, but what's most important is that you know where to look for the fish. And with the Salt Strong Insider Club, we cover all of that. We'll teach you guys how to read the beach. We'll teach you where the hot spots are. We'll have reports from other members that you can reference. It's the largest resource that you could have uh, as a surf fisherman. I highly recommend that you guys check it out and I'll show you some of the awesome stuff that we've got in the insider community for you once you join. The Salt Strong Insider community has courses and tips designed to help you become a more efficient and consistent saltwater angler. And we also have reports from local anglers in your area to help you keep up with the trends and a guarantee that it will help you catch more fish or it's free. Now, with all the money that you'll be saving on rods, reels, lures, and tackle with your Insider Club discount in the shop, the membership pretty much pays for itself. So guys, thanks again for watching. If there's anything I missed out on or you have any questions or some extra modifications that you recommend, I please please ask you to leave them in the comment section below. I'd be happy to view them there and respond to you guys. But again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live so strong in wet lines today